Hi, I'm Jade Hernandez, a camouflage tattoo artist and educator. I help beauty bosses effectively market their business and become the authority in their field, close more leads and make more money. In the past six years, I've launched two successful beauty businesses to multiple six figures with over a hundred five-star raving reviews and several media press spotlights. While most marketers will tell you to hustle and work harder for success, I'll show you how to create more value from the inside out so that you work less, make more, and truly expand and transform your business and life. This is the Beauty Expanded Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be sharing with you something that I actually share with all my students who train with me. We do dive into marketing and sales because what we do in camouflage tattooing is what I would consider high ticket sales. And so it's a different nurture process than something that, you know, costs, I don't know, $100 or less. And I share with my students what I'm about to share with you, which is a strategy that I use in all of my marketing. So a lot of you follow me on Instagram and I get a ton of comments on the way that I really promote myself and my services and the way that I put myself out there. And I think what draws people to my brand is... Obviously the content, but more importantly, what's happening behind the scenes is how I actually strategize my social media content. And that's what I'm going to share with you on this episode, because I think that when it comes to marketing, especially social media, oftentimes it can feel like a second job that is extremely draining. And what I mean by that is when you don't have a game plan, so we don't have a plan set in motion. That's where we often get stuck and feel uninspired and don't know what to post. When you can come up with a strategy for your social media, I think it's a lot easier to maintain and stay consistent with. And my strategy is really simple. I'm all about simplicity, valuing my time, and making sure that every little bit of my time is productive. When it comes to social media, there's a strategy that I use, which is entertain, educate, and execute. So I divide all of my social media content into one of these three categories. Either I am creating content that entertains, or content that educates, or content that executes. And when I say execute, what I mean is executes the sale or the call to action. The call to action is what I want my potential lead to do, whether that's book a consultation, click a link, get a service done, share with a friend, listen to a podcast. Those are all call to actions. So let's start with the first category, which is content that entertains. This category is all about gaining new followers also known as new leads. So when you're cold to someone, so in marketing, we usually coin audiences either cold, warm, or hot. So cold audience is someone who doesn't know you and doesn't care to know you, and they certainly don't want to be sold by you. And so the last thing you want to do is try to sell to a cold audience. It's someone that just does not know you whatsoever. A warm audience is someone who knows you and is familiar with you but hasn't actually hired you yet. And that's the most important part of that equation is the yet part. A hot audience is often someone who not only knows you, follows you, engages with you, and is ready to get a service done, but maybe is still price shopping or saving up money or waiting for the right time to get something done. And so that's what we would call a hot lead. You have to strategize your marketing content differently for each audience type. So to reiterate, you don't want to sell to someone who doesn't know you. That's where the whole slimy sells cars man comes into play if you really try to hustle someone who is cold to you. When it comes to content that I want to use to simply get someone to just follow me, all I'm trying to do is to capture their attention, pique their interest, and intrigue them enough to follow me. That's the only objective. And the only way that I do that is by simply entertaining them. So if you take for an instance, when you're mindlessly scrolling through social media and you're kind of just scrolling through posts, the only thing that really captures your attention 
is something that entertains you, whether that humors you, maybe it's inspiring quotes, maybe it's a really funny meme, maybe it's a cute baby or a cute animal, or maybe it's a really beautiful photograph of a travel destination or a super cute outfit. That content is simply piquing your curiosity and your interest because it is entertaining you. And that's the only time where you may just stop the scroll and spend time engaging with that post by watching it. And then obviously, the longer it entertains you, the more drawn you are to give it a follow. When you think about capturing new leads and a new follower, all you want to do is create a bulk of content that simply entertains. So what I did in the very beginning of my career because I didn't have any clients is I simply focused on creating content for each of these three categories. But specifically for entertaining, I was dancing way before Instagram Reels made that popular. But I would create videos of me dancing, wearing scrubs. So in a passive way, it was showcasing kind of what I did for a living, but it wasn't a hard sell whatsoever. I was literally wearing scrubs, dancing and twerking to music, and it was simply for entertainment's sake. Just something that had really great music, movement, and would attract someone to stop scrolling and be curious and question what the hell they were watching and hopefully click the follow button to learn more. That's all I was doing. Now my interests have changed, so I really love more artistic videos that show hyper-focused texture and up-close shots of things. So I do a lot of videos right now of my studio, lighting, and ink bottles, more of an artistic flair that intrigues me right now because that simply is what I'm interested in when I'm exploring other people's reels and videos. Those are the things that have piqued my curiosity. So that's where my attention is. I was really into fashion for a little while and was doing some of those really cool viral challenges of you changing your outfit really quickly up against the beat of a soundtrack. And those are really fun too. And so entertaining content can be a variety of those things. I even think about TikTok. I don't market heavily on TikTok because that's not necessarily where my audience is, but I do think TikTok is a great resource to look at what kind of viral challenges and videos are really entertaining for you to get stimulated and inspired by what you can do for your own business and brand. Because TikTok is so video focused, it's a really great way to come up with ideas. The biggest objective is just to pique someone's curiosity enough that they follow you. This is a way that you can gain new leads. So for the next category, which is education. So now you have a new lead who is following you. So you've captured a new lead. And now at this point, you're not necessarily selling them. All you want to do is start educating them on what it is that you do. So for educational content, you'll often see me do a lot of the before and after videos or photos. I'll also answer frequently asked questions. The most frequently asked question in my industry is what happens when you tan? What happens to that camouflage tattoo? And so I'll do videos answering those frequently asked questions. Anytime you educate your client or your potential leads, you always position yourself psychologically as an expert in your field. You can explain what happens during a session. You can do a video on the healing process. You can do videos and share your techniques. You can do a video on how to match skin tones. You can do a video of yourself explaining why you got into the permanent makeup industry. You can even do a video where you give a tour of your facility or your place of work. These videos should still be fun, but the difference is is that they are there to educate your client on what it is that you do. And so you begin to position yourself not only as an expert, but also an authority in your field because they don't know what you do. So once a follower begins to follow you and they start to engage and learn more about what it is that you do, and oh, by the way, they've been looking for bra artists or wow, they've been really intrigued by getting their lip blushed or scalp marker pigmentation or they have stretch marks and scars. That's when they begin to engage and watch your videos to learn more about what it is that you do because hopefully it applies to them. At that point, you can create content that helps execute the call of action. 
So for me, a lot of times I want people to simply book a consultation. I want them to go to my website where they can learn more. They can check out my portfolio, but there's also an online form that they can fill out to book a free consultation. So I've done videos in the past where I literally say consultations are free. I've done videos where it explains what to expect during a consultation, how to book a consultation. This content is simply to let them know how to reach you. Send me a direct message, book your next appointment. That's going to lead to the sale. So when you think about social media, it's a lot easier to manage it when you have a game plan because literally I'll think, okay, I need to gain new followers or maybe I've been hyper-focused on educational content and I need to mix match that with some execution content and entertaining content. And then for that month, I just know that I'm going to be more focused on creating content that entertains or executes. And the way that I book my schedule is I usually will spend one day out of the month doing videos. I'll get my makeup done professionally, I hire a makeup artist, and I work with a videographer and we'll knock out three videos or two videos that day. And then I'll sporadically post them throughout that month. I'm also posting sporadically through that week, but strategically, there's a lot more intention behind a lot of those videos and when I can at least for me book out a day one day a month it's easier for me to really make sure that I have a lot of content that covers all grounds to really funnel that new lead into my booking system. When you think about this strategy in general it literally is a sales funnel to get them from cold to hot and then this is really when your social media content begins to work for you 24 seven, instead of you feeling like you're constantly working for social media. For example, I will literally have clients book a consultation with me and I'll ask them, how did you hear about me? And they'll tell me, oh, I watched this YouTube video and I'll know that this YouTube video was posted three years ago because that's the one thing that's really great about social media is it's evergreen. And in marketing, what we mean by evergreen is once you post it, it's there forever. It's a video or a content piece that will continually bring you new leads years after you posted it. Now I have a library of content out on the internet that it's a lot easier for me to manage because I have so much content out there on YouTube, on Google, on Instagram and Facebook that all just feeds me continuous leads through this funnel system. And so when I think about social media, I don't get overwhelmed because I have a plan in place that actually works for me and is conducive and productive within my time frame. I'm not spending hours and hours trying to think of what to post or what to say because I already know what I need to do in order to diversify my marketing efforts. A couple of other tips is it doesn't matter, and we've done the analytics to test everything out. It doesn't matter if you post candid videos using your iPhone versus hiring a videographer to create a more polished look. I have a combination of both. There are times when I am using my iPhone and I edit the videos myself, and the app that I like to use is called Splice. It's S-P-L-I-C-E. I know a lot of people use iMovie, but I find Splice is a little bit easier to edit content. And honestly, the reason why my videos are somewhat cool is because I edit the clips based on the beat of the music. So when the beat drops, then that's when I cut the clip into something else. And so while you're watching a video, even if it's a transition or carousel of before and after photos, it mimics the sound of the beat of the music that makes it entertaining. So that's one tip that I'll share with you. And then other times I will use a videographer to create really high quality polished videos because that's the vibe and look that I personally like. But I also think there's an audience that really enjoys more of the candid reels. So having a combination of both is great. But let's say that you're in the place of your business where you can't necessarily afford to hire a videographer. Using your iPhone is good enough. So don't let that deter you from creating content because we've ran the numbers of engagement to test out the two 
two styles and it made zero difference on whether or not people booked a consultation with me if I had a polished video versus a very candid one. I'll also get a lot of students or friends who tell me that they hate speaking on camera. And a lot of times these reels have voiceovers where you don't have to say anything except just mimic the verbiage of the voice reel or even some of these really inspiring posts is someone else speaking and you just creating really cool clips to go with that content. But no matter what, whether you hate being on video or love it, you need to be on social media. If you have a business, you need to take advantage of social media because it's free. What you pay for is the time and sweat equity of creating content that will help you capture leads and new followers that you then begin to funnel in through your sales system. Where most people get stuck is they don't know what to post or they don't think that what they have to post is interesting, but you're still most likely spending time on social media. If you expect to continuously get new leads in order to close more opportunities, you need to be on social media to be able to put yourself out there and make it easy for people to find you and the services that you offer. So if you hate social media, hate doing camera stuff, then you really need to outsource it and hire people to do that for you. But for you to believe that you can build a business without social media in today's age is poor thinking. That's not going to be possible. And you're going to waste so much time and energy trying to find leads that social media is the easy solution, easy way out through that problem. I also think the other roadblock that people find themselves facing is consistency. I'm not a rule follower. I often think that rules are made to be broken. So I'm not one of those people that believe that you need to post X amount of times a day at a certain time frame or even X amount in a week. I don't follow any of those rules. I just post what I know I need to post based on my strategy, which is to entertain, to gain new followers, to educate, to warm them up and to execute, to get them to book. I post whenever I'm inspired and it's consistent because I've accumulated enough content only because there's a strategy in place. But as for making sure that I post at 8 a.m. every Monday, no, I don't follow any of those rules. Now, I will say that I have an assistant who helps me stay consistent on Instagram stories and Facebook simply because I have her capture content behind the scenes every time we're in the studio working and if the client is open to us filming. We always leave their identity anonymous, but it's really easy to capture some of those behind the scenes to show people that we're working and to see what we're up to. And because of that, I am a little bit more consistent, but by all means, there is no set structure to that. I think the more rules you put into place, the more pressure you feel. And that's when that creativity and passion kind of wanes for me when there's a lot of rules. I feel very constricted. So for me, I'm not a rule follower. I just post whenever I feel like I have value to offer and when I know that there's intention behind what I post, it makes it much easier for me to know how to caption that because I know to keep it short and sweet for entertaining or I know that I'm explaining something for education or I'm simply trying to get them to do a call to action when it comes to executing. I hope that helps to see a little bit behind the scenes of how I manage my social media. I'm all about making social media fun. And I think the only way to keep it fun is if you're authentic. And the only way you can be authentic is if you really know who you are. And so my interests change and evolve over time. In the beginning, I was doing a lot of dancing stuff. Then I moved into fashion and now I'll call it artistic expression. And who knows, in the next few months, I might be into something else. I love that my social media is a real representation of who I am. I never try to be anyone that I'm not. And I think people who do do that end up getting themselves in more trouble because not only is social media like working a second job, but if you're trying to be someone else that you're not, that's like adding a third job to your schedule. And that gets really taxing. 
And so be who you are, own the fact that you're different than me or the other artists down the hall. There's going to be an audience, I promise you, that is going to relate to you and feel connected to you because of who you are. Figure out what you're drawn to, what you're attracted to, and own that. I think that is how social media can be a lot easier and no pressure for you so that you can stay consistent with it. Entertain educate and execute. I'm excited to see what you guys do with this. Thank you so much for tuning in. I love to connect and help you more. If you have a question you'd like for me to answer, please send it to jade at studioconceal.com. That's J-A-Y-D at studioconceal.com. And I might highlight it on my podcast. I find what's often personal is most general. So if this episode helped you, please share it with a friend who may need the encouragement and inspiration. I'll catch you on the next one.